In this video, I will be discussing about volumes of solids with known cross sections. Frequently, in mathematics, we encounter solids whose boundaries are not surfaces of revolution. And the method that we discussed in the previous videos cannot solve the volumes of solids of this type. However, in most cases, the volume of such solids may be found if the areas of its parallel cross sections are known to us. Such areas may be that of triangle, square, rectangle, circle, or circular sector, parabolic segment, or maybe an ellipse. Because the formulas of the areas of these geometrical figures are known to us. Actually, these are solids with the property that the cross-sectional area in a plane perpendicular to the x-axis can be expressed as a function of x. So, example, let S be a solid defined on the closed interval A to B. Now, suppose the graph of that solid is this one here and this is a solid that is defined from A to B here. And you see that this is a solid which is not formed by the solid of revolution. But we know the cross-section of the solid. It could be a circle, it could be an ellipse, or it could be any geometrical figure whose area formula is known to us. Thus, to find the volume of the solid is to slice the solid from A to B. So here we will do the slicing at this time. And suppose this is a representative of one of its slices here. So this is represented by the formula A of X. So A of X is the area of this cross section of this given solid whose thickness is delta x. Hence, if the cross sectional area in the plane is A of x of i, then the volume of the solid can be approximated by the sum of all the slabs whose area is A of X and whose thickness is delta X. And there are how many slices? There are N slices here. If you slice this one into N slices. However, you notice that this expression is not the exact volume of the solid. This is just an approximation of the volume of the solid. But this approximation becomes perfect as n goes to infinity, which means that our delta x goes to zero. In other words, if you slice the whole solid to infinitely many slices, then every slice will be a slice that is very, very thin because the thickness is approaching zero. So therefore, mathematically, we can write that the whole volume is equal to the sum of all the slices whose area of every slice is A of X of I times its thickness delta X. And there are how many slices? There are infinitely many slices because you will be slicing the whole solid to infinitely many slices then you notice that this is already a limit of a Riemann sum and then we recognize that this is the integration of all the slices a of x dx from a to b because you will be slicing here from a to b and integrating adding all the slices will comprise the whole volume of the solid. Hence, we say that this is 
our formula of the solid generated not by a solid of revolution but the requirement here is that the solid should have a cross section whose area is known to us and to apply this formula we will follow this very common steps of solving the volume of solids with known cross sections step number one examine the solid and examine the shape of a cross section of the given solid it is often helpful to draw a picture if one is not provided in the problem step number two determine a formula for the area of the cross section and step number three integrate the area formula over the appropriate interval to get the required volume now let us apply our derived formula to our example number one a solid has a circular base of radius 4 units find the volume of the solid if every plane section perpendicular to a particular fixed diameter is an equilateral triangle so first let us draw a picture of this problem and in this problem we will draw that one in a three-dimensional space so we have here our x axis so this is our positive x this is our negative x this is our positive y this is also our negative y this is our positive z and then going down here is our negative z and it's given in the problem that it has a circular base of radius 4 so we will count here 4 as the radius of this circular base so it has a circular base of radius 4 here so allow me to draw a circular base here so this is our circular base in this drawing so it's a circle in the xy plane and then if every plane section which is perpendicular to a particular fixed diameter is an equilateral triangle then the top portion is just a single curve here so allow me to draw a single curve here wherein if you chop that one because suppose this is our radius so this is positive 4 this is positive 4 this is at this time negative 4 because the radius is 4 and at the back negative y this is also negative 4 because this is the xy plane it's a circle that lies on the xy plane and if you are going to slice this one along the y-axis you form an equilateral triangle here so this is the form of one slice and if you happen to have a slice here this one you've got another equilateral slice so there will be a lot of like this in this solid and remember that this distance from the x-axis is the y of the circular base and also this one is another y of the circular base but since this is an equilateral triangle all sides are equal so this side is equal to this side so this side is also 2y because the length of this is 2y so this is 2y but this side is a square root of 3y and so that we can have a good picture let us draw this one here so this is the equilateral triangle that we have in the drawing so this is the height of the equilateral triangle 
this is parallel to the y-axis this one here but at the center this is on the x-axis so this is y this is y so the whole length is 2y therefore this side is also 2y and we know that in an equilateral triangle this is 60 this is 60 so half of that is 30 degrees angle so therefore this is a 30 60 90 degrees triangle therefore we know that the length of this side in a 30 60 degrees triangle is equal to the shorter leg times square root of 3 so that's why we have square root of 3 y for the height of this equilateral triangle so first let us find the area of this equilateral triangle in terms of one variable so we write here since the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 squared then the value of y is obtained by moving this x squared to the right hand side of the equation so this is 4 squared minus x squared and taking the square root of both sides we have y which is equal to the square root of 4 squared minus x squared so looking for the area of the equilateral cross section we have area which is equal to the base which is 2y so 2y is our base and the height is square root of 3y over 2 but we know what is our y our y is just the square root of 16 minus x squared from here and this will be multiplied by square root of 3 times the y again which is the square root of 16 minus x squared all over 2 so therefore our area will be the simplified form of this so 2 will be cancelled and what remains is the square root of 3 times the product of these two square roots which is equal to 16 minus x squared there and since we have the area which is in terms of x and we are actually slicing the solid parallel to the y so we are slicing the x so the thickness of this slice is our dx so therefore we say that our volume is equal to the integral of our area which is the square root of 3 times 16 minus x squared dx and we are slicing it from negative 4 to 4 because we are slicing here negative 4 to 4 so that's why that's from negative 4 to 4 but if we factor the constant outside the integral symbol we have the square root of 3 times the integral from negative 4 to 4 of 16 minus x squared dx but because this is an even function we can just integrate from 0 to 4 but we need to multiply it by 2 because we are integrating from 0 to 4 at this time for this area function here so geometrically we are integrating all the slices from 0 to 4 but we need to multiply it by 2 because we are having a solid from negative 4 to 4 so integrating this one we have 2 times the square root of 3 times the integral of 16 which is 16x minus the integral of x squared which is x cubed over 3 
evaluated from 0 to 4 here. So we have volume which is equal to 2 square root of 3 times 16 times 4. If you substitute 4 to this expression here, and this is subtracted by 4 cubed over 3, and the whole expression will be subtracted when you substitute the 0 to this expression. So 16 times 0 minus 0 cubed over 3. So we have the volume of 2 square root of 3 times 16 times 4 which is 64 and this is subtracted by 64 over 3 here because we know that this 1 goes to 0 here so we have the volume which is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 times the result when you combine these two terms here so this is having an LCD of 3 so this becomes 192 minus 64 and if you subtract 64 from 192 the result is 128 and this will be divided by 3 so we have the volume which is equal to 256 times the square root of 3 over 3 cubic units so this is now the volume of the solid that we are looking for in this problem. Now let's proceed to our example number two. Two cuts are made on a circular log of radius 8 inches. The first cut is perpendicular to the axis of the log and the second one is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees with the first cut. So if the two cuts met on a line through the center, then find the volume of the wood cut out from the log. So here, let us draw a circular log in this three-dimensional space. So suppose this is our, say, the y-axis. So this is the y, positive y. This is the negative y. This is, say, the positive x and the negative x here so this is our x y plane and let us draw a circular log whose cross section is obviously a circle of radius 8 so suppose this is of radius 8 here so let's draw a circle in the x y plane and because this is a circular log so we have this log here so it's a cylinder whose axis is parallel to the z axis and according to the problem we will make two cuts here and the first cut is perpendicular to the axis so we assume that the first cut is here lying on the x y plane because this is perpendicular to the axis of the log here and then the second one is inclined at an angle of 60 degrees with the first cut so the cut is like that making 60 degrees angle so this one is our second cut here now take note that it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the first cut so this is now our 60 degrees and so that you can have a good picture I can draw the log that is being cut out here so this is now the log that is being cut out from this circular log and to find the volume is to slice this one parallel to the y-axis so if we will get one slice here say this one you've got a right triangle so every time you cut parallel to y you will get a right triangle every time you make a slice so this is an angle of 60 and we know that this side is the y of this circle 
And since this is a 30, 60, 90 degrees triangle, we know that this longer side is square root of 3 times y because it should be the longer side whose length is equal to the shorter side times square root of 3. And to have a good picture, we can draw it here from this drawing here. So every time you cut, and if you have a cut here, like that, you will make all the time a triangle here, which is a right triangle. So if you will make a bigger picture here, this is now the angle of 60. So if this is y, this longer side should be square root of 3 y. So here, let us find the equation of the area of this right triangle. Since the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 8 squared because the radius of this circular base is 8, then we can solve for the value of y. So the value of y is obtained by moving this x squared to the right hand side of the equation. So 8 squared minus x squared here. And then taking the square roots of both sides, we have y which is equal to the square root of 64 minus x squared. Then we can find the area formula for this right triangle because this is equal to the base, the length of the base times the length of the height which is the square root of 3y. So base times height over 2. That's the area of the triangle. And we know that this is equal to the square root of 3 over 2y squared. And we know that y squared is equal to 8 squared, which is 64 minus x squared from this one here. Thus, we can solve for the volume of this cut out that the volume is equal to the integral of all the slices, which is a right triangle whose area is square root of 3 over 2 times 64 minus x squared dx slicing it from negative 8 to 8 because you will be slicing it here the x from negative 8 to 8 since the radius is 8 but we can factor the constant of square root of 3 over 2 outside the integral symbol so this is square root of 3 over 2 times the integral from negative 8 to 8 of 64 minus x squared dx here but we can apply the properties of the definite integral that we can integrate from 0 to 8 here but we need to multiply the whole integral by 2 here so this is the integral from 0 to 8 of 64 minus x squared dx so this 2 and this 2 cancels each other so what remains is square root of 3 times the integral from 0 to 8 of 64 minus x squared dx and integrating that integrand we have the integral of 64 which is 64x minus the integral of x squared which is x cubed over 3 and evaluating this one from 0 to 8 so therefore our volume is equal to the square root of 3 times 64 times 8 minus 8 cubed over 3 and this will be subtracted by 64 times 0 minus 0 cube over 3 here and we know that this 1 goes to 0 here 
So volume is equal to the square root of 3 times 64 times 8 which is 512 and 8 cubed is 512 over 3. So therefore, this can be simplified when you combine the two terms with a common denominator of 3. So this is 1536 minus 512 here. And if you are going to subtract this numerator, we have square root of 3 over 3 times 1024 here. So therefore, our volume is 1024 times square root of 3 over 3 cubic units. And this is the volume of the solid cut out from this circular log. Now let's proceed to example number 3. Find the volume common to the cylinders x squared plus y squared equals 16 and the other cylinder with an equation of y squared plus z squared equals 16. So first, let us draw the two cylinders from this three-dimensional space. So this is our x-axis, so positive x, negative x, and suppose this is our positive z, negative z here, this one, and this is our y. And I do this, that the z is here, so that we can have a good picture of these two cylinders. So, the graph of this cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 16, is a cylinder parallel to the z here, the z axis. So, let's draw it here. So, this is our cylinder. So, of course, it's having a circle as a cross section. So, you can do like that. So, this is a cylinder parallel to the z. So, we'll label this one as x squared plus y squared equals 16. So, the cross section is on the xy plane. And the other one is a cylinder that is parallel to the x-axis. So, the cross section is on the yz plane because the variables here are y and z. So, we have this one so it's a circle and of course it has like that and also down below but i will not draw anymore so that you will not be confused so it's a cylinder whose cross section is on the yz plane but it's parallel to the x-axis so it's like a pipe that is parallel to the x-axis and the problem is asking to find the volume of the solid that is common to these two intersecting cylinders. So we have a cylinder parallel to the X and a cylinder parallel to the Z. So what kind of solid can we form? We form here a solid that is like this. So it has actually a square base here whose top is this one here it's like that so the figure is like this but this is only the graph of one of the eight parts of the solid that is common to the two cylinders because you know in a three-dimensional space we have eight octants so this is just the first octant here but if you're going to draw the whole solid here we form a solid like that this one so it's uh, having a square base here but of course it has also same solid down below here but what you can see in the drawing is only this portion here so I'm drawing only this part here so with this base and you can see that this is only one-eighth of the whole solid that is common to the two 
cylinders. So our goal at this time is to find the volume of this solid. And it is very logical to find only one eight this one part here because we know that this is only one eighth of the whole solid so finding the volume is to multiply the volume of this one part because there are eight octants here so we have one and then two three and then four which is a solid above the x z plane and we have also the same solid down below this plane now take note that this one is having an equation of y squared plus z squared which is equal to 16 and if we are going to slice this one parallel to the x z plane we'll get all the time a square here so this is our representative of one slice here now take note that this one slice is having dimension of x here so this is the x because this is the x-axis and this is also our z because this is parallel to the z-axis here this one so let's represent that one mathematically so we know that the first cylinder is having equation of x squared plus y squared equals 16 and solving for x we know that this is x equals the square root of 16 minus y squared and for the second cylinder which is y squared plus z squared which is equal to 16 we can solve for our z which is needed for our equation and z is equal from this equation 16 the square root of 16 minus y squared also so the area of the square element is given by x times z because we know that the formula of the area of a square is length times width but we know what is our x our x is equal to the square root of 16 minus y squared and also z is equal to the square root of 16 minus y squared so multiplying the two we have 16 minus y squared thus the volume of the whole solid that is common to the two cylinder is equal to 8 times the integral from 0 to 4 because you will be slicing it from this base up to 4 here because the radius of the cylinder is 4 since we have here 16 as the square of the radius and why do we multiply it by 8 because there will be 8 like this in this solid here so this is only one eighth of the whole solid and since there are eight octants here in a three-dimensional space we multiply it by eight so eight times the integral from zero to four of 16 minus y squared and we are integrating that one with respect to y because we are slicing the y since the vertical line is our y-axis so our volume is equal to 8 times the integral of 16 which is 16 y and the integral of y squared which is y cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 4 so therefore our volume is equal to 16 times 4 minus 4 cubed over 3 if you substitute this 4 to this expression here and this will be subtracted by 16 times 0 minus 0 cubed over 3 here so volume is equal to 8 times 64 minus 64 over 3 since we know that this one will go to 0 so volume is equal to 8 
times 192 minus 64 over 3 if you combine these two terms here. So therefore, this is equal to 8 thirds times 128 if you subtract 64 from 192. So we have 128 times 8 is equal to 1024 over 3 cubic units. And this is the volume of the solid that is common to the two intersecting cylinders here. A cylinder that is parallel to the x-axis and a cylinder that is parallel to the z-axis. And they are perpendicular to each other. And the solid form is this one. And that's it. If you learned something today, please check out my channel for more videos like this. And click subscribe. Click the notification bell below so you get notified whenever I will post in a new video. Don't forget to like this video to show your support. And always remember to map your way up. Thank you.